So we're finding the LCD first. We use that LCD to make up some equivalent fractions. So you're multiplying both the numerator by and the denominator by some number. Then we add and subtract them, and finally we simplify the can. I definitely want to see simplified fractions. Okay, we're back to start on the first one up here. So first example, we have 2 sevenths plus 8 over 21. We're going to start with the biggest denominator. We look at that thing, biggest denominator was 21. We checked, does 7 go into 21? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great, that's automatically our LCD right there. So I write LCD is 21. Now we're going to find the biggest denominator. What that means is that my new denominator should be 21 and nothing else. I have 21 already. I don't need to multiply this side. I need 21 over here. What do I need to multiply by to get 21? Okay. If you multiply the denominator, you also have to multiply the numerator. So my fraction becomes 6 over 21 plus 8 over 21. And lastly, we're going to write this as one fraction because we know we have a common denominator. I'd like you to show that, yeah. But right now, as soon as we move past this chapter, no, I don't care. But for right now, I want to see that. How many people made it all the way to 14 over 21? Good. Did you make it past there? Yeah. Good. Why? Because it was simplified. What simplifies out of that? So we'd write this as 7 times 2, 7 times 3. Of course, those 7s, that's what we can simplify out if we get 2 thirds. Awesome. All right. Next up. We got 2x over 10 plus 3x over 15. Hey, what is your LCD? 30. Okay, okay. So 30, that means 2 and 3. Did you guys do that? Good, all right, all right. So I'm, I'm guessing you did uh, 6x over 30 plus 6x over 30. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Cool. So that's 6x plus 6x over 30, or we get 12x over 30. Can you simplify that? Yeah. Yes. Sure. What goes into that? 3. 6. Bigger. Take the biggest one you can find. Six. six goes into that. Sure, six goes into 12 and six goes into 30. If you did three, fine. If you did two, fine. But you're going to have to do it again. Do you see that? You have to. You can't just do one round and assume you're done. Double check it. Make sure you've gone all the way you can that nothing else divides those numbers. Six, yeah, six for sure divides. So we'd write this as <laughs> six times 2x. We'd write this as six times 5. The sixes are gone because we're making a one out of that. That's how we simplify. And we get 2x over 5. How many people got that one? Oh, good for you. Can I show you something on this problem? Why don't you see something? When you're adding and subtracting fractions, there's nothing that says you can't simplify first. Okay, now, of course, we wouldn't want to simplify here because we purposely unsimplified. But check this out. If I start with my 2x over 10 plus 3x over 15, do you guys see that I could simplify this one immediately? No. Mm -hmm. That's actually x over 5. Do you see it? Yeah. Divide both the top and bottom by, by 2, you get x over 5. 
This is this actually you can simplify. Three goes into that. That's x over five. Do you see that? Yes, no. If you don't, yeah. shake your head. That's fine. Yes or no? Okay. So in our case up here, we do. Remember that two x. We could write two times x. Ten would be two times five. Yeah. Yes. This would be three times x. This would be three times five. Every time you have matching factors, they're gone. X over five plus. Oh wait a second. What's? How about that? X over five or x? Do we already have a common denominator? Yeah. This would be. I'm gonna erase this so I don't get confused here. This would be x plus x over five. Numerators being added, denominator just stays the same. How much is x plus x? 2x. Did you get the same answer? Yes. Yeah. Sure. There's nothing that says you can't simplify first. So if you want to save yourself some time at some points, try simplifying first. That's okay. You can do that. Okay. 2x and x squared are not the same thing. x squared means x times x. 2x means x plus x. Good question. Do you guys see the, the difference between these problems? I hope so. Okay, what was the last one I did? Five y over six. Five y over six. Four times plus two y over nine. Are you Yes. Let's find an LCD. We'll start with the biggest denominator. That's nine. Six doesn't go into nine. We check eighteen. Does six go into eighteen? Eighteens are LCD. We've got to multiply both these fractions, so on the right-hand side, tell me what I multiply by, please. Two. two. On both the top and the bottom, left-hand side, how much? Three. We're going to get 15y over 18. We're going to get 4y over 18. I do want to see the next step. I do want to see 15y plus 4y over 18. The reason is because when we get to negatives in about five seconds, we're going to be this is going to help you out a lot, especially when we have more than two fractions. We're going to have three, four, five, six fractions with order of operations stuff. If we don't show these steps, it gets kind of messy. Do it in your head. You're going to make sign errors. Trust me on that. That's why I'm going to make you show this step. We have 15y plus 4y. That gives you? 19y over 18. I was hoping for more enthusiasm, guys. Come on, you let me know. Hey. Yeah, 19y over 18. Exactly. Can you simplify 19y over 18? Yes. Yeah, you could if you wanted to. You'd be 1 and 1 18th y. Okay, you could do that. Do you have to do that? No. no. Simplified means no common factors. These don't have any common factors. 19 is a prime number. So there's no way we can simplify it. You could write it as a mixed number. That's a difference. Right? So if I'm not asking you for a mixed number, that's fine. If I am, then you have to go one more step. How many people feel pretty good about finding LCD so far? How about the equivalent fraction thing that we practiced? Yeah. And can you use that to now add some fractions? Yes. Okay. Next time we're going to start subtracting fractions. I'll show you some negatives, what to do with that. We'll deal with multiple fractions at a time, so more than just two. And then at the very end, we'll start dealing with some complex fractions and order of operations. That'll be a good day. So we're adding and subtracting some fractions, and what we need to understand is that we can do this even with some negative fractions. So let's take a look at a few examples to illustrate how we deal with a negative fraction in this instance. So for example, what if we do negative one-fifth plus nine over 20? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what do you have to absolutely have in order, order to add or subtract fractions? Good. Do we have one so far? Okay. Hey, before you get started, let me do you a favor here and tell you something that works with fractions every time. If you have a negative fraction, notice on our first fraction we have negative one-fifth. In order to make your fractions easier, do this. Whenever you have a negative, take that negative. Do you remember me telling you that it doesn't really matter where the negative goes? Go in front, go in the denominator, or go in the numerator. Do you remember that? Yeah. Take that negative and put it on the top of your fraction, on the numerator.
Because what that's going to do is allow your denominators to be exactly the same sign. That makes it easier. And it allows you in the next step to use addition rule appropriately. Otherwise, out front, it's kind of hard to deal with this. I don't want you adding these two numbers. You're not, you're not going to get 10 out of this. You're going to get 8 somehow. And how you're going to see that is with that negative going up to that 1. So right off the bat, if you have a negative fraction, take that fraction, make it a negative on the numerator. Associate that negative with that numerator. Always do that. Always do that. If it's a negative, yeah, always do that. Makes things a lot easier. Now, next up, we got to find an LCD. Can you tell me what's the LCD for this problem? Good, yeah, very good. We'd find the biggest denominator. We'd check to see if the other one goes into it. It does. So we'll write LCD is 20. Okay, folks, what do I need to multiply this fraction by right here? This one. By one. By anything? By one. If I multiply by one, am I going to change it? No. So do I need to multiply by anything? No. Okay, no problem. Sometimes that happens. How about the one on the left-hand side? Notice, hey, this is why we did this. It's why we moved the negative to the top. Now I'm able to multiply by just a couple numbers, and I just have that negative on the top. That's kind of nice. It helps out a lot. What do I need to multiply that fraction by on the left-hand side? Now that that negative's on the numerator, we can do 4 times negative 1 and get how much? Negative 4. So negative 4 over what? 20. Plus 9 over 20. We've got a common denominator. Now look what happens. When we make our one fraction out of this, which I, of course I'm asking you to do, we are going to get 20 on the denominator. The denominator does not change. But on the numerator, what are we going to have? 5. No, negative negative, negative 4 plus 9. Oh, I said 8. I meant 5. Yeah, we're going to have negative 4 plus 9. That's the answer? No, not yet. Well, I definitely want you to show that step, especially when we start dealing with more than one fraction at a time. This helps out a lot. Can you add negative 4 plus 9 now? Yes. That's addition rule. Addition rule says different signs, subtract, sign the bigger number. How much do we get out of that? This is why we keep that negative on the top of our fraction. Notice how it's followed that 4 all the way down. That's kind of nice. It lets you use your addition rules like you have before. If we keep it out front, it makes things a little bit harder. And are we going to leave it 5 over 20? No. Heck no. No, we want to simplify those things. So 5 over 20 gives you... Four. Cool deal. We divide the top and the bottom by 5. We put 5 times 1 over 5 times 4. Cross those 5s out. We get 1 4. We're going to do two more together. I'll give you a couple to do on your own, then we'll move on. Hey, do I need a common denominator even though I'm subtracting? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Can you go ahead, don't say it out loud, just do it in your head. On your own, find your LCD here. On your own. 